So we are going to continue styling our navigation bar. The focus in this video is going to be on the drop downs and our goal is to style it so that it looks like what we see on the finished project. So let's get started. The first thing we are going to do is remove the background colors and the borders on these links in the navigation bar. So we'll open our CSS file and scroll to the section where we have defined the styles for the links within the nav item and we will remove the background color and the border. We will also remove the red border that we have assigned to the nav element within the header and then we make sure we select uh, the drop down because that's what we are going to be styling in this video and we will give it a red border just so that we can see what we are styling. If you refresh our browser you are going to see now that our drop downs are highlighted but the width of these drop downs appear to be shorter than the one in the finished project so let's uh, start by adding the width of our drop down so we are going to give it a width of a width of 190 pixels if you refresh this you will notice that the width increases but it also causes the nav item to increase in width and this makes the nav items in the navigation bar have some irregular spacing between them and that is because the drop downs belong to the nav items so when you increase the width of the drop downs it also increases or pushes on the width of the nav item itself if you look at the html you will notice that the drop down indeed belongs to the nav item so in order to fix this we are going to use uh, positioning we'll use absolute and relative positioning between the nav item and the drop down that is, is found inside it so we are going to select a nav item we're going to define a selector for the nav items and we'll give it a position of relative and then in the drop down we'll give it a position of absolute now the way absolute and relative positions work is that if you give the parent element a position of relative and then you give the child element a position of absolute you will be able to position the child element in relate in relation to the uh, parent element using these properties like top bottom uh, left and right i'm going to illustrate this in a few seconds right now we want to place the drop down at a position of 80 pixels from the um, 80 pixels in relation to the nav item to which it belongs now this 80 pixels is the height of the header and our nav uh, menu or rather our nav element is inheriting that height so eventually our nav item also inherits that height so from here to the bottom is 80 pixels and if we give the position top a value of 80 pixels we are simply saying that this drop down which is a child element of the nav item should be should be positioned at 80 pixels from the top of the nav item so it's going to produce the same result and then we will also give it left of zero pixels all right so it should be positioned at the left and then 80 pixels from the top so if you refresh this you will notice that the spacing has been eliminated since this is now being uh, displayed using the positioning so let us continue to add other styles to our drop down we are going to give it a background color of white a border radius of 5 pixels and then we will give it uh, some box shadow which i pre prepared in the background i'm going to show you how to get this value so let us just refresh and see how it looks okay we can now take out the red border and it is looking very close to what we have 
on the finished project. Now for the box shadow, the way I got it is I used an online tool. You can just search on Google for box shadow generator and click the first link. And then you can play around with these values and see how the box shadow, how the box shadow changes to the right here. And then when you have had a satisfactory uh, combination, you can just copy it. So that's how I got this value. That's how I got uh, this value for the box shadow. So the next thing we are going to be designing now is this upward pointing arrow on the drop down. And we are going to design this or implement this using purely CSS, which means we are not going to write any HTML for it. In fact, if you take a look at our HTML, uh, you are not going to see any element that represents that icon. And to design this with only CSS, I'm going to do a quick demonstration here to show you how it can be achieved. And then after that, we'll go ahead and implement it. So I'm just going to create a span element here. I'll give it a star property. And then I'll give it a display of inline block and a margin of 20 pixels. And then now this is the important part. I'm going to give it four thick borders on each side. So I'll give it a 20 pixels solid red border at the top. Okay, so I have given it four thick borders, 20 pixels each, and they have different colors. Now, if we go to our browser and we refresh this, you're going to see how it looks. I think this is something that unless you have uh, come across it before, it would be difficult for you to predict that this is how it's going to look. Now, this is the border to the right. This is the border at the top. This one is to the left and this one at the bottom. Now the shape here that looks like what we want, the shape that looks like what we want is the border at the bottom. So all we need to do is to make these other borders disappear. And then what we will be left with is the green border at the bottom. So if we inspect this using developer tools, this is the CSS that we just wrote. Now we want to retain the green border at the bottom. So we are just going to give, instead of red for the border at the top, make it transparent. Okay, when you make it transparent, you notice how it disappears. And then the next one we will eliminate is the blue border. So instead of blue color, we'll make it transparent. And then lastly, the brown border, will also make it transparent. And what we are left with is the green border. This green border looks like what we have on the drop down itself. So I'm just going to copy these borders. And then I'll head over to our, let me first of all undo the changes I did here. Uh, it was only for demonstration purposes. Okay. And then in our style.css file, I'm going to temporarily paste uh, those borders I copied here because we are going to use them in a few seconds. Now I am going to copy this drop down, the selector for this drop down and paste it under here. And I'll add something called an after pseudo element. So usually use, usually use a pseudo element like this whenever you want to attach a little object when you want to attach a little object onto another uh, element, uh, you don't really want to add an actual HTML element, but you just want to attach onto some other element. So that's when you use this pseudo element. And whenever you do it, you usually use something called a content and you just make it empty string. And then you make sure you dis uh, use position absolute because by default, uh, whatever you are displaying with this selector is going to be displayed in relation to the dropdown itself. So we don't even need to put position relative on the dropdown. 
So right now, if you just see top 10 pixels, it is going to appear at the top. But right now you're not going to see anything because the content is just an empty string and we have not applied any style. So I'm going to copy uh, these borders and paste them in that selector. And then let's just reload and see what happens. Okay, this is where it appears. The first issue is that our drop down or rather our arrow is not really as big as this one. So we are going to reduce this uh, thickness to 10 pixels only. And then instead of displaying it 10 pixels from the top, I'm going to display it negative 10 pixels, which will make this to be a same, the same distance in the opposite direction. So here it is 10 pixels from the top. Negative 10 pixels will be starting from here going up. So we refresh and that's how it looks. And I think this should be negative 20. Okay, all right. So this looks good. The color we want here is a white color. So I'm going to change this to white. Refresh. And it looks good. Now we want it to be about 20% or let's say 15% distance from the, uh, the, the left corner or the left end of the drop down. So we are also going to add a left property and give it a value of 15 pixels. You go back and refresh. And uh, yeah, we have our final uh, drop down that looks like what we have on the finished project. So this is it about the arrow. Uh, the next thing we need to do is to provide this animation effect where the drop down seems to slide from top from bottom to top or when you hover over it.